It's that time of year again, a week away from Christmas, and because I'm an astronomer, I'm being asked that old chestnut, what was the star of Bethlehem? Well, whatever it was, it's described in only one place, the Gospel of Matthew. The only other author who has anything to say about the nativity is Luke, and he doesn't mention anything unusual happening in the sky around this time. What time exactly are we talking about? Jesus, and I'm assuming for the sake of argument here that he was at least a historically real person, was supposedly born during the reign of Herod the Great. But we don't know for sure when Herod died. It was at some point between 5 BC and 1 AD, and most likely 4 or 5 BC. So I'm skirting around the first big if, and assuming that Jesus was real, at least a real human being, and that he was born when Herod was alive. With that major proviso, we'll further assume that he was born in or before 4 BC. The next major question is whether Matthew is documenting a real celestial event when he talks about the star in the east that the three magi or wise men were following. Obviously, the authors of the various books of the Bible aren't unbiased. They have a message they're trying to get across. It seems a bit odd that if the Star of Bethlehem were a reasonably spectacular event coinciding with the birth of Jesus, that Matthew is the only one to mention it. It also seems strange that neither Herod nor any of his advisers, according to Matthew, knew anything about this major event in the sky until the three wise men brought up the subject with him. So if we want to get on to what, from an astronomical perspective, the star of Bethlehem might have been, we have to make a second major assumption, namely that Matthew was writing about something he truly believed was a real celestial event, despite the fact that it seems to have escaped everyone else's attention. What was happening in the sky at any point over the few years before 4 BC that might explain the Star of Bethlehem, if it was a real object. The obvious contenders which have been put forward time and time again for hundreds of years are a comet, a supernova, or a conjunction of planets. Nothing else fits the bill of a reasonably bright object that remains in more or less the same relative position in the sky for a period of at least days. 2,000 years ago, careful records were kept by various cultures of comings and goings in the night sky. The Chinese, for example, were very meticulous. The positions of the fixed stars, the movements of the moon and planets, and the appearance of anything unusual, such as a comet, were well known and documented. Nothing in the nature of a supernova occurs anywhere in the astronomical annals of the world around this time. In any case, the remnant of such an event would still be visible today through telescopes. So that leaves us with the possibility of a comet or some unusual alignment of bright planets. The comet theory can't be ruled out, and the Chinese do refer to what they describe as a broom star, making an appearance in 5 BC, so the timing is about right. The only problem is that, throughout most of human history, comets have been seen as portents of doom, exactly the opposite of a signal of good news. Still, a comet is, at least from an astronomical point of view, a possibility. The only other option that makes sense is a conjunction of two bright planets, Occasionally, pairs of the brightest planets, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, appear close to each other in the sky. It so happens that in 7 BC, Jupiter and Saturn made three relatively close approaches as seen from Earth. They never came close enough to appear even remotely as a single star, although in astrological lore it could have been seen as an auspicious series of alignments. Perhaps more interestingly, on August the 12th in 3 BC, Jupiter and Venus approached to within a tenth of a degree of each other, and that's only one-fifth of the diameter of the full moon. So, take your pick. Comet, planetary alignment, or never really happened. 
all are possible explanations of Matthew's reference to the Star of Bethlehem. Whatever you choose to believe, I'd like to wish you a very merry festive season and a happy new year.